He's a father, he's a husband, he's a small business owner, and he's also a member of the Dorchester County Council. And now, Converse Conchellus is running for the South Carolina House District 94 seat. In this special edition of Quintus Close Ups, I speak exclusively with him one on one. And be sure to download the free Quintus Close Ups app in your Apple or Google Play stores. Conchellus, it's so good to meet you. You as well. I appreciate this. So let me refresh your memory. Okay. There was an article in the Somerville Journal scene concerning you last year, and it reads this small business owner and Dorchester County Councilman Con Chellis announced his candidacy for the Republican nomination for South Carolina House District 94. Tell me why Con Chellis, why South Carolina House District 94? Yeah, well, um, I, you know, I currently reside in the, in the district. I'm a native of Somerville, grew up there. I know the district well. Um, in my short time on County Council, uh, it hasn't taken me long to realize a lot of what we do at the local level is restricted by the state legislature. Um, the council district that I'm in right now, or the council that I serve on, is not really based on a seniority system. So I don't feel um, you know, any problems or uh, concerns with vacating that seat as soon as I am. I feel it's more important for me to go and serve in Columbia, which is a seniority system, so we can begin building influence for Dorchester County at the state level. Matter of fact, you said this quote, I'm running to give Somerville strong leadership in Columbia. In only seven years, I have built my small business into one of Charleston's best in its respective field. That happened through building relationships, listening, and treating people with respect. All are characteristics we need in our state representative. Tell me this, what does leadership look like right now in Columbia in your mind? Um, it's, it's old. <laughs> And I don't mean that by age, I mean that by the seniority system. Okay. Um, you know, Columbia is a seniority system, like it or not. Um, a lot of people would like to see term limits enacted. I don't know that that's practical in Columbia um, at, at this point. I certainly wouldn't be opposed to that at some point down the road. Um, but immediately, I think what we can look at is potentially term limiting uh, committee assignments and doing some things to get some fresh ideas and fresh leadership and to, um, you know, kind of get a more, um, uh, more even and balanced government that is more statewide instead of locally interested in specific parts of the state. Um, Dorchester County and the Lowcountry specifically, uh, where I represent, has had a lot of turnover in House State District 94 in the last decade. Um, this current uh, upcoming election cycle, we will be electing our fifth representative uh, for this House seat in the last 11 years. Um, that is a recipe for failure in Columbia, and we need somebody that can uh, go and stay for the long haul, is committed, is not going to leap and use this as an opportunity to catapult to you know, a federal position or something like that. Um, I'm committed to not run for Congress. I'm committed to stay in this seat, to do the work as long as it takes to get done, to gain influence, to bring it back to Somerville and Dorchester County. And matter of fact, you went on to say this quote, we need an agenda to hold Columbia accountable. We have a road funding system that isn't directing money to the counties that have high growth like ours. We have a school funding system that is pouring money into underperforming districts and leaving high performing districts like ours underfunded. And then there is this fiasco with the power companies. Tell me, what is that agenda? Yeah, you hit several topics there. Um, you know, when you're looking at road funding, um, we've done a good job in the past at the local level. We've got our one cent sales tax that is, you know, roads are bad where we're at, um, especially in Dorchester County where we've experienced high growth. When I say roads are bad, um, I don't just mean the condition of the roads, I mean the size of the roads um, and the amount of roads we have. Um, we've done a good job with our one cent sales tax but we did not do a good job at the state level in getting matching funds to really make the most out of that dollar. And we really need to get the state more involved locally with the needs that we have in terms of growth. Statewide, you've seen a lot of money, I feel like, poured into areas, specifically in the PD and upstate, that may not have necessarily had the need that we do here. Um, but right now, again, getting back to that seniority system and who has influence where at the state level, is where the funds are being directed right now. And that is not a system we need to operate under. We need it to go to the areas of greatest need. Um, in terms of education, 
uh, you know, that kind of boils back to tax reform. Okay. Um, I think we need comprehensive, comprehensive tax reform in Columbia. We have the seventh highest income tax in the nation as a state. Um, county to county, when you're looking at the, you know, all the varieties of exemptions and everything else, sales taxes all over the place, uh, county to county. Um, I think it's important for us to get a fair and simple system um, that puts us on a level playing field as a state. Um, school districts like Dorchester District 2 are heavily penalized by our current tax system. Um, and so, you know, we have one of the largest school districts in the state, one of the highest performing school districts in the state, but our per capita or per child funding is very low in, com in comparison to some of the other counties. Um, so we need, again, we need to get a fair and simple system that puts us all at a level playing field. Um, that's in terms of education. Uh, I think the third point you mentioned was the nuclear fiasco. Um, you know, to me what this boils down to is simple government overreach. Um, you know, the government, uh, I won't say it's back in 07 or 04, I can't remember, but whenever the Base Load Review Act was enacted, that was essentially a tax that was um, deceptively hidden in our electric bills that the state legislature decided to charge its citizens. They wanted to get in the energy business, felt like they are experts in that field, and thought they could build nuclear reactors. Um, I just don't think that the government should be uh, involved in these types of programs. They certainly shouldn't have put the tax burden on the uh, citizens. And I think that you know, going forward, we need to make sure we're making decisions that are going to enable the free market, people that are experts and professionals in certain industries like that, allow them to do those types of projects and not put the burden back on the taxpayer. And I certainly don't think that the ratepayers um, need to pay for this mistake. And obviously a lot of people that I've talked to who are running for offices in Columbia mostly, I talked to them about ethics. Where are you with this discussion about ethics and the state legislature? Certainly, you know, they've made some changes in, in terms of ethics, and obviously the ethics has been, you know, a big thing in the headlines lately. You know, I think going forward what we need to do is we need to make sure that we're staying on. I, I think the laws are, are fairly um, well in place now, some of the changes they've made. We've got to make sure that we're um, enacting those laws and that we're staying on top of the rules. Um, I think we need to add to it. We need to do a little bit more with the boards and commissions. So, um, you know, as an example, we've got, you know, um, several boards and commissions. I'll give an example in Dorchester County uh, uh, at the local level. Um, our DCTA, Dorchester County Tax Authority, that spends our one cent sales tax, um, that money equivalented to about a $150 million budget. Well, the county, as a county council, we operate on about a $50 million budget. So that's triple our budget. So my point is these aren't elected officials, these are boards and commissions that are spending triple the amount of money that your county is um, on road funding. Um, but they're not held near to the same accountability standards in terms of ethics and principles that we are um, when you're looking at monitoring and transparency. So I think that we need to make sure we're not just um, you know, confining this to elected officials but to the people that are actually spending a lot of our tax dollars and that can be a lot of the boards and commissions and appointments. And you know, today begins this, what really six days of <laughs> you know discussion and whatnot as the legislative session ends in Columbia. Sure. What do you hope that they will pass next? Oh wow, that's a big one. Um, you know, I think there's going to be a lot of issues that are circle. I mean, there's right now they're going to be focused on the budget, um, and and they're going to have to get through budget season, and I think that's all we're going to really see come out of the session. Um, going into the next session, we're going to have to have some serious conversations about comprehensive tax reform. Um, the retirement system is going to need to be addressed. Um, you know, a lot of people don't realize, but the retirement system is kind of the can keeps getting kicked down the road. But the nuclear fiasco that we saw, which is the greatest financial failure in the history of our state, uh, will be will seem like nothing if our retirement system fails. Um, and we are on a road to failure there if we don't do something about that uh, immediately. That's going to take pro proactive leadership, forward thinking, not waiting for the problem to become a crisis before we do something about it. We need to do something about it now before it is a crisis. Um, so I'd like to see comprehensive tax reform ad addressed. I'd like to see the retirement system addressed. Um, local government fund, um, that's got to be addressed. Um, right now, you know, there's a law in the books uh, that the um, state is supposed to be uh, 
supplying funding to the local governments um, at a certain level. They're not doing that. They either need to fully fund local government or change the law. So they need to follow the law or change the law. Right now they're breaking the law. And we know that you are a small business owner and you just mentioned you're from Somerville. Yes. And in 2016 you were elected to Dorchester County Council. But describe Con Chelsea beyond politics and business. <laughs> um, you know, mostly just a family guy. I'm, um, I'm married. I've got three young children. We've got a, a, a seven-year-old, soon-to-be five-year-old, soon-to-be two-year-old. In fact, our birthday's next Monday, oh, cool. uh, the two-year-old. So, um, you know, they take up m the majority of my free time. Sure. They're they are quite a handful, but we love them and we have a great time with them. And I you know, mostly spend time with family outside of work. My wife's got a small business as well on Main Street. I have two small businesses, one in Somerville, one in Goose Creek. Yeah. Um, I help her with her business. So between the three businesses and the kiddos and all that, we, uh, and then of course I do have this second job called, you know, uh, county councils. So, right. <laughs> um, you know, that, that takes up a smidge of my time too. So, um, you know, but, but we have fun with it and we like to stay busy, so it works out. And between now and obviously the election or primary, what do you want voters to know about you and what you'll do in Columbia? Yeah. As a um, recap. Yeah, my, you know, the biggest thing about me, I'm, I'm, I've got a proven track record as a successful business person. Um, I have been committed to our community. As I said, I'm, I'm a native of Somerville. Um, I've served in leadership positions uh, for Somerville Chamber of Commerce, I've been president of Somerville Exchange Club. I founded uh, the Somerville High School Athletic Club, which is the largest type of booster club of its kind in the state. Right. Um, I've served on Habitat for Humanity. I've participated in fundraising events for the ARC, uh, for uh, Dorchester Children's Center. So um, really been involved in the community. I'm committed to the community and doing good things for the community. Um, this is a place I grew up and lived. Um, my father and mother spent most of their life here. I'm hoping my children will live here. Um, so this is important for me to um, help see our community continue to thrive. That's so good to hear. Well, Converse, Con Jealous, thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate this. Absolutely. Enjoyed it. Likewise. Nice to meet you. You too. Yeah, yeah thank you.